Hello again, traders, and welcome out. This is Songkit from Mavic Currencies, and back with another edition for the Currency Room. We'll be taking a look at this week's price action and talk about our upcoming week ahead and navigate these volatile markets together. There's a lot to cover in this uh, uh, Currency Room, so let's dive into last week's events. And uh, boy, there's a lot to talk about, not just in the currency market, but all about uh, what happened in the bond market. I mean, if you take a look at the equity markets, I mean, equity markets still end up closing higher. Despite all that, uh, the news events that we had all week, all this banking collapse, we are still seeing markets higher. But at the same time, volatility is very high as well, which means that we are seeing this uh, back and forth price action where we have seen some massive gains and followed by some massive uh, losses as well. Now, talking about the currency market, US dollar pulled back, and that's all because this bond yields are plunging lower, down 25% in two weeks. This is, again, the biggest move that we're seeing in the bond market, I mean, going back to, until 2020 when the COVID hits. So same thing happening in the gold market. So as the bond yields are plunging, we saw the biggest gain in the gold since March 20 as 20 as well. I mean, this is where there's a whole lot might be changing that we need to pay attention to. I mean, also talk about crypto markets rallied across the board. Again, Bitcoin has now broken above that 25K resistance. And also to note that the, we've seen the biggest gain since 2021 February. So we are seeing massive movements across the board. And this is where it's very important to take a look at all sorts of uh, markets so we can kind of put it all together and see what's really where uh, guiding us for the next upcoming week. Now, let's take a look at the schedule. Despite all that volatility, I'm sure everyone has heard of this, the, the Swiss Valley, uh, the Silicon Valley bank collapse, followed by Credit Suisse. And this is where there's a lot of uh, hesitation in the markets, a lot of uh, nervousness in the markets about this regional bank's collapse. And this might be spilling into other banks that might be coming up in the next few weeks or months. So um, markets are nervous. We just have to kind of see what the Fed is going to do next week. So this last week events, we had uh, started with the US CPI, which again, was not under and not over. I mean, they came in line with expectation. The core CPI was slightly higher. So as you can see, the, the, the inflation is not falling off the cliff, but it's not running either. But this is where we are still sitting at 6% year over year, which is far, far from the target of 2% that the Fed has set. And I think this is the difference that we, we can see between the last time we started to see these banks collapse we were at, you know, the inflation wasn't a problem and we saw those uh, interest rate come down very fast. And I think this is why now it's a very challenging situation because the inflation is still, the Fed is still fighting inflation at the same time, trying to keep uh, a peace among the markets, uh, some uh, calm the markets down uh, with what we are seeing right now. Now, followed by the PPI report, which was below expectation. Um, and then we have seen some negative numbers out of the retail sales as well. Um, we take a look at the Aussie employment report. That was much better than expected. And we've seen the Kiwi GD report. That was actually below expectation. So we're seeing some, some, some good numbers and bad numbers. And this is where we have to take a look at how the good numbers are affecting the currency and how the bad numbers are affecting the currency. So we can see which, where we are seeing that relative strength and weakness. Now, looking at the Philly Fed manufacturing index out of the U.S., that was down as well. So weaker numbers, economic numbers out of the U.S., but the inflation number was just not um, not not the best and not the worst. Uh, we also had the ECB uh, rate statement, which again followed by a 50 basis point rate hike. And this is where we need to spend a little bit more time because last week we had Credit Suisse uh, Bank also fell into the same trouble as what we saw with Silicon Valley Bank. Now, the ECB, there was a lot of uh, sort of back and forth between the expectation that if the Fed's going to, if the ECB is going to raise rates by 50 basis points or not. And I think uh, there was a very smaller chance the expectation was coming down to 25. Um, but at the same time, they came out and they did raise as expected. So it clearly did not deter the ECB to from, from its uh, rising interest rate mandate. 
So uh, this is this is the kind of thing that we have to look for next week as we go for the the U.S. Uh, the FOMC rate statement and see if they do raise rate, uh, you know, more than expected or what's in line with expectation. Uh, outside of that, uh, that was uh, really what was driving the um, the markets all over was the the movements in the bond markets and some of the nervousness among the regional banks. So let's do a last uh, quick last week review and take a look at the percentage changes across the board. And I mean, there are some big numbers to take a look at. So S&P again, up 1.43%. If we take a look at S&P and outside of the S&P, the NASDAQ was actually the biggest uh, gainer by 5%. So why NASDAQ is gaining more than S&P? It's because of that interest rate expectation. As those uh, these interest rate expectations is, is plunging lower, uh, that's really driving some of the markets higher, which has been suppressed by by raising rates. Uh, the world stock index again was mostly flat, uh, but it, because we have seen uh, more news this week from the European front with the Credit Suisse, and that really caused uh, other markets to plunge lower. I mean, look at the massive move in crypto, 25.97%. So as the yields are plunging lower and people are flocking into gold and flocking into crypto, I mean, take a look at the uh, the gold movement, 6.39%. This is the biggest move, again, going back to March 2020. Um, are we seeing that kind of uh, turmoil in the markets? I mean, we, we I think we are seeing is a more uh, sort of reaction to this unexpected, um, you know, the news events that have come, come across. Um, but this is all competitive to back in March 2020. Oil actually fell a class lower as well, 13.51%, because this is where... The, the recession seems imminent. We are, but we are, we are seeing that maybe a turning point where uh, we start to see the unemployment rate goes higher, um, the yields start to pull back, and the bond market start to go higher. Maybe this is the inflection point, um, but it's still early to say that. Now, taking a look at the uh, the the percentage change in the in the crypto markets and the currency market, so you can see that in the currency market, it was a good trading week. But at the same time, you just have to make sure that you're trading the right currency. The yen gained across the board while the dollar pulled back. I mean, look at the negative correlation. I've talked about this negative correlation throughout the week. That if the if the dollar is underperforming, we're seeing the money going into the yen. And as we are seeing this risk off move in the markets, you know, we always talk about which one are the safe haven currency. You know, dollar, traditionally dollar and yen has been the safe haven currency. But in the past year, yen has lost that status because the ultra uh, division is from Bank of Japan. Now, if the yields are falling across the board for the U.S. dollar, um, then again, the dollar is not the safe haven currency. So the way, where would you park your money? So would you park your money in Swiss franc, which is also acting as a very good safe haven currency? But with this last week of Credit Suisse news, we saw euro and the Swiss franc plunges lower. So money's not going there. So at the end of the day, the only resort is a Japanese yen. And that's why the money went. That's where the money went to. And as we go into next week, we just need to pay attention to this correlation between the dollar and the yen. Now, pound didn't do much. Uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of news coming out of the UK. Uh, the Canadian dollar uh, was weak. Aussie was weak. Uh, Aussie was stronger, and the Kiwi was actually stronger at the best. So if you really look at it, you know things are not really following that traditional risk on and risk off. This is just being driven where the news events are. I mean, the Kiwi, as you can see, is actually the up the most, and this is despite that negative GDP that we had. Uh, last week, uh, initially the the kiwi fell lower, um, but then we actually rallied off of that. On the other hand, we saw the Aussie employment report that was actually the best, but they did end up pulling back. Uh, did not had strong gains because, and this is where we need to pay attention to this correlation here. Good news is uh, bad news, or it's just it's not turning out to be that good of a news for the Aussie. But then bad news is being ignored. And the uh, the Kiwi is rallying. So uh, I like that turnaround here. And I think we need to pay attention to the Kiwi in the coming weeks. So let's uh, let's jump into the crypto world here. And you can see the big gains. I mean, 36.27%. That was the biggest gain that we've seen since February 2021. So something to note here. And we also cleared that 25K resistance is sitting at 27K. 
So is this where the money will likely to go into? I just want to remind everyone that just a week ago, if you look at the last week currency room, we were at sitting at testing some some low levels on these cryptocurrency. Our, our trend score was hitting minus two. In just a short period of time, we have jumped into a plus two. So this is a massive switch uh, from a week to week basis. So clearly, uh, whenever that happens, we could see some uh, some sort of pullback that takes place right after that. Uh, so next week will be a, a good week where we might see some consolidation, some some pairing back, some gains. Um, and after that, we'll see where uh, the next big move comes. But just want to kind of note that this is a big fluctuation just on week to week basis. So let's do a quick market analysis and talk about our trend score and our market outlook. So we are still below the 20, the 50. I mean, I would say that we were been sitting at a minus two for for some time here. I'll I'll turn that to a minus one. I think this is where the market bearishness is. It's not as aggressive. I mean, we are down uh, below all these moving averages, but right now we're just sitting right at this 200 moving average. So between minus one and minus two, markets are not out of the woods yet. Let's take a look at the chart here. As you can see that this is a sideways price action. Despite all the news events, all the market volatility, this thing is not moving lower and it's not really moving higher. So we need to trade this range of price action. And if this breaks the support, this is where the next big move will come that will take us down to the October lows. But until then, just treat this as a range bound um, price action. We don't want to be aggressively bullish. We don't want to be aggressively bearish. But in between, there will be good opportunities to be had. And that's really what the, the range bound price action does, that you can swing both ways based on the momentum and the price action. Now, looking at the other markets, uh, looking at the crypto world, I mean, you can see the massive jump. And this is what I was talking about earlier that, you know, just a week ago, we were just sitting at this lows. We were testing this 200 day moving average. So things outlook was not as rosy for the for the crypto world. And then in the short period of time, we've seen a massive move. So just got to realize that we still have some resistance to clear. This was all driven by these moving, uh, you know, market forces. Um, but as we start to stabilize and if we don't get any sort of bad news next week, all that focus is really going to the Fed. If the Fed comes out and said, you know what, we'll, we'll we're sticking with a mandate. We have a uh, inflation to fight and we'll backstop all these, um, you know, problems that are out there with the regional banks. I mean, we could see some of the reversals or some of the pullbacks that could take place from this week's move. So next week is very important, starting with the Fed. Now, looking at the uh, the World Stock Index, again, similar thing. You can see we're sitting in the range, seeing a little bit more weakness here. So just to kind of note that we're seeing, um, you know, U.S. markets seems to be doing a little bit better compared to the you know, world markets. So let's still talk about next week's schedule because we have a jam-packed schedule with central banks and important economic events. Right now, as you can see, the central banks are the one that's really driving these moves. So FOMC, starting with Wednesday, uh, they again expected to raise rates by 25 basis points. And just two weeks ago, we were sitting at a 50 basis point. Now, the way the yields have plunged, you would think that maybe there's a big expectation that maybe the Fed won't change, won't be raising rates. I don't think that'll be the case. I think we can kind of see what the ECB did last week. Maybe the Fed will kind of follow the same thing. But I think markets may be getting ahead of itself in the short period of time where the expectation for now rate cut is actually increased uh, quite substantially just in the past week. So, this will be the one and just not the rate hike. I think, think this will be just as expected. But the press conference, what is their outlook? You know, we haven't heard from Fed all last week. And I think that was a question I had. Why why the Fed is not making comments? Because we are in the blackout period. Um, we get this blackout period leading into this, um, you know, the press, the sta FOMC statement. So that's why we haven't heard from anybody. Now, next week, we'll, we'll uh, once, once this is out, we'll be able to hear more from these uh FOMC, uh, you know, the, the members, and that will be driving the, some of the moves here. So followed by the Swiss bank uh, a statement as well. And look at that. They're expected to raise the rates by 50 basis points. And I mean, this is another big U-turn that we have seen 
in this currency. We were sitting at a plus two and a plus three just a week ago, and now we have collapsed with that move. So why is that happening? Because again, they are the one coming out, uh, uh, bailing out Credit Suisse, and this is uh, the expectation was a lot more bullish um, for the Swiss bank, and which might not be the case if they have to really come down and um, do some easing. So uh, this will be another, I think, an important one to pay attention to, followed by the uh, the UK, the uh, uh, the bank rate statement. And remember, there's a lot of focus on not just what they are going to do at this time, but they're what they are actually going to be doing in their statement. What is their future projections? Uh, the UK, they're they're coming out with the 25 basis point rate hike. So as soon as uh, as long as these come in line with expectation. Um, and we just have to pay attention to uh, are the is a statement hawkish or dovish. On Friday, we have the, some of the uh, PMI figures from Euro, Pound, and US. So you can see this is a very busy week. And also, we missed that on Tuesday we had the CAD CPI. So if you look at this, the projections, the CAD, the Canadian CPI has been coming down uh, for consecutively for the last few months. So if this picks up. Again, that's where we can see a big turnaround in the CAD. But right now, CAD seems to be following the footsteps of the U.S. dollar. They're kind of going lock in, in step with the movement here. So next, this week outlook again, equity market outlook hinges on that FOMC statement. So we need to pay attention to Wednesday. I think after that, we'll see things clear up um, after that. Now, central banks, we have three central banks. So if you're looking to be active, I think these are the ones that we primarily need to pay attention to. Outside of that, we have the good numbers or good events that are coming out from Canada, CPI, and then we have the uh, employment, the uh, manufacturing and services PMI that are coming out on Friday as well. So let's do a quick currency analysis and take a look at um, the, the charts and see where the trend score and the velocity, velocity score is. So let's start with the crypto. Like I said, crypto charts all over the place because you know we went from a uh, minus two now to a plus two. So massive move. But whenever you see these moves, you know, the big question is that do, can I expect another 20, 30 percent next week? Well, the probability of that is very, very low. But there's a higher probability for markets for the crypto to actually pull back and, you know, pair some of the gains as well. So, we, you know, we look at the look at the massive candle that we had over here and we actually just made a new high here. So I think next week I'll be wary for um, sort of any sort of rally. But I would be uh, expecting some sort of pullback early on in the week. But and then uh, when we, as we get the FOMC on Wednesday, we'll probably have a better clarity. But until then, if you look at the velocity, is still positive. But the trend is really what has changed here. So going forward, you really have to look at um, maybe this. This this will be more bullish than bearish. Now Bitcoin cash, you can see that even with the, despite the big rally, we haven't really cleared these uh, resistance level. Momentum in the shorter term is strong. So, I mean, in, the, in this case, you know, we can make a case and say, well, this looks like a, a lower, uh, this looks like a lower low with a lower high. Well, it does look like that. But like this is where I said, we have to look at next week and see if we have further push in this, which again, I think is a low probability trade, but we can see some sort of pullback off of that. Now, looking at the Litecoin. Uh, oh, sorry, Ethereum. Let's start with Ethereum. We are at the resistance. So clearly Bitcoin looks the best, uh, followed by Ethereum. In the shorter term, velocity is not, it's just kind of building a base here. But I mean, look at these wicks that we're getting. These are massive wicks, massive moves. Um, so next week, again, will be a test here if this can actually break above or it can actually pull back here. But we have, we are sitting right at the resistance for Ethereum. And lastly, Litecoin. I mean, this just looks like a bear rally to me. So both the Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin, they look like bear rallies where Bitcoin and Ethereum actually looks the best. Um, but again, we are looking at collectively for the crypto markets. Shorter term, good bounce. But next week will be the test for if, for if the market is going to hold the gains or not. Now, let's do, take a look at the currency market because now we are seeing some massive shifts. And I like to see these points because we need to make that determination. Now, are we flipping that switch? Are we going from bullish to bearish? Now, look at the dollar. So dollar has been bullish since February. And that really came uh, coming down like just just, uh, just the second week of March here. Now, we are still sitting at this prior uh, resistance, which is now the support. 
Uh, but right now, I think this all has to come down to what the bond market is going to do. If the bond market continues to uh, pull back, I think that is going to uh, continue putting the pressure on the U.S. dollar. So you really have to pay attention to that correlation. Uh, but in the shorter term, you can see the momentum is actually uh, bearish on velocity, minus one, but the trend score is zero. So whenever you get these lower numbers, just realize this is not a screaming sell. It's not a screaming buy. So you have to really look at that scoring to see how how bullish and how bearish you are with that price action. Now, on the other hand, look at the Japanese yen. I mean, we were sitting quite weak here at this level, and then boom, we just jump right back up. And again, this is all coming down to the volatility. So this is where the question is that once the volatility kind of uh, you know goes away, or we start to see um, that the 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 positivity started coming in the markets, can we expect a reversal? I mean, if you look at the the entire 2023 price action in the yen, we have seen this period of jumps, which just doesn't lead anywhere. It just pulls back. Can okay, we make the case that, yes, maybe this is not going to be long lived? Um, so far, that's what it looks like. So you really have to be careful as you're playing the long side. Uh, but, you know, I, I like to play this on a shorter term basis, but you don't want to be married to that outlook. You can see that the last week we had good uh, movement here on the upside and then we had a nice little reversal that took place is here as well so i i personally like to swing this both ways the trend is a plus one but again i i won't be surprised this if this um, kind of pulls lower because if you look at the overall uh, behavior of this currency it doesn't seem to hold the gains but in the short term it's strong you don't want to be going in and shorting it right away but you also want to be waiting for markets uh to give you a signal now, this is the big one. I mean, if you look at Swiss franc, I mean, we had a massive breakout. And look at that. We have already fallen below. And it's actually fallen below this resistance. So is this a time to flip the switch on Swiss franc? This is what it looks like. I know we, we looked at Swiss, uh, the US dollar. I think the Swiss franc is the one of the best currency. I mean, if you take a look at US dollar and Swiss franc, I mean, Swiss franc has done very well. So now is this the point that we need to turn bearish here? I'm no longer on the bullish camp on the Swiss franc. I think in the shorter term, we can start to see that pullback. The momentum has uh, clearly flipped. So any sort of bear rallies that I see, I will want to see if those bear rallies would fail. So um, trend score is minus one, but velocity score is minus three. What we want to see is that trend scores start to weaken as well. Um, but yeah, this is a time not to be so bullish on Swiss franc. But look at the latter. Same thing goes with the euro. I mean, euro had, um, you know, rallied uh, in the recent weeks, but then we actually seen it testing that level. So if you look at both euro and Swiss franc, they actually done well okay, among its counterparts. So maybe this is the area we might need to consider looking at more on the shorter side in the coming weeks. Um, Look at the big movement that we had in the euro, and we just haven't really gone anywhere since then. So velocity, you can see, it's just sideways. Is this a low base forming? It could be. I mean, after a big move, this is what we want to see. We don't want to see a full retracement. What we want to see is a low base. This is a low base forming. If this breaks the support area, I actually really like some of the euro crosses to the short side. But for the shorter term, you don't need to get ahead of yourself. The trend score is still a zero. And not extremely bullish, not extremely bearish. Now, British pound is mildly bullish. So if you look at the British pound, let's go back to the British pound here. Um, I mean, a lot of wicks on this. I'm not really a big fan of British pound right now because, again, there's other currencies to really pay attention to. The velocity is a zero and a trend score is a, a, is a small plus one. I think there's better price action if you look at other currency pairs. So let's skip to uh, the, the Canadian dollar. I mean, look at that. Uh, sideways price action. I mean, since December, the last four months of consolidation, is this a point where we are breaking that consolidation? I think as a, at this point, it looks convincing, but you need to really uh, understand that this is a strong level of support. So we need some confirmation. You can see that we actually did dip lower here, but it only kind of got better off of that. So uh, I think it's a bit of a do or die situation for the cat here. This, if this breaks lower, I think there's a massive move coming in the CAD on the downside. So shorter term, it looks a mildly bearish to me. It's a minus one, but you'd really, uh, I'm willing to kind of look at this both ways. If this actually rallies off the support or actually continues to weaken. So 
Uh, velocity is a minus two, but trend is still a minus one. We need stronger trend scores if you're trying to find a, uh, more of a directional move. So in that case, take a look at the Aussie. Aussie is clearly on the weaker side. I mean, you can see that despite the rallies in the markets, Aussie is not really benefiting from that. I mean, there's a lot of back and forth. Look at this wicks on this candle, but we're still below the 20, the 30, 50, and the 200 moving average. So uh, the Aussie outlook looks really bearish here. I was surprised to see that Aussie did not do well despite that massive move that we saw in the gold because now gold, uh, we see there's some sort of uh, correlation there where you know we see the Aussie do well, but again, that's really not the case. So a bit of a disconnection there. Shorter term is okay, but I don't like Aussie here at all. Now, looking at the Kiwi, I think this is a much better price action. It held in much better. And look at the uh, volatility. Look at the uh, velocity. It's much stronger all in the last, uh, on Friday, you can see it was actually close to the highs of this week. So here's what's good about the Kiwi. We have bad news, negative GDP, but actually it was shoved off. So this is where follow the price action. This is uh, looking a little bit better if you're looking into growth currencies. Remember, Kia CAD doesn't look right the best. The Aussie doesn't look the best. So out of them, we are seeing Kiwi actually do uh, the, the best here. So we'll be paying attention to Kiwi uh, more next week. Again, looking at the trend score for next week, uh, Aussie looks the worst to minus two. So we'll need to continue paying attention to this minus two. Um, the direction again is more to the downside. And then we have the new candidate here. It's just Frank. If the Swiss franc gets a little bit worse, uh, we might need to pay attention to that. And same thing goes with the euro. This There might be some continued pressure to the downside in these two currencies. So we'll have to pay attention to that. And as far as the relative strength goes, I think Kiwi looks like the best to me. Uh, pound, mildly bullish. And yen is uh, what's actually very uh, um, volatile currency because it, it's, it's influenced by risk on and risk off sentiment. So make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, so there's, you know, we don't have a screaming buy or sell. So I think in between, we still have good opportunities to be had as far as, you know, velocity goes, because that's what we need. We'll look at the minus three velocity in Swiss franc. Look at the plus two velocity here on Kiwi. You know, Kiwi Swiss franc, that's one of our first pair we'll be taking a look at, followed by currencies like Kiwi CAD. And even we'll be paying attention to some of the dollar crosses as we go into the FOMC next week. So let's take a look at possible trades ahead. So as you take a look at the possible trades ahead, let's start with some of the uh, Swiss franc pairs. So let's start with the Kiwi Swiss franc. And I mean, look at that. I like the fact that on a daily chart, it did break lower and then reversed. So right here, it has that has a nice little low here and a reverse. I think this, this do stand a chance for some sort of rally if like that price action continues. I mean, look at the 200 moving average. I think this is a deciding factor here. We've been below this 200 moving average since um, since 2022, since March and April here. So if we can get above this, I think that would be a big game changer for this. I mean, so I think for the shorter term, uh, look for any sort of pullbacks to use as a buying opportunity. Same thing goes with Aussie says Frank. I mean, look at that. We had a nice little break and we are reclaiming that level. So it's always nice to kind of see this price action that just doesn't hold the, hold the losses and kind of gains across. So I think uh, as far as the chart goes, you can see that Swiss franc was the biggest loser. So every other currency would be showing gains against, uh, against the Swiss franc. But again, I think if you look at the price action, uh, the, the only the better one that looks is the Kiwi Swiss franc. Now, Let's take a look at Kiwi again, I mean, among other currencies as well. So right now we have a negative score on the Aussie and we have a positive score on the Kiwi. So let's take a look at this correlation. I really like the way Aussie Kiwi is sitting right now at a 106.84. You can see that we are actually below the 20, the 50 and the 200 moving average. We had a massive wick last week here. Um, this is an hourly chart here. You can see that off the... Uh, off that uh, negative GDP number, uh, you know, the Kiwi was really weak, but then that totally reversed and back to where it was. This is a very bearish sign. So if you're looking for something that's less volatile, I think Aussie Kiwi is the one that I'll be paying attention to. And I think it's heading down to the 105 area. Now, let's take a look at other uh, other charts as well. Let's talk about the dollar. So dollar yen, this is the one that I've been, um, you know, most uh, requested pair uh, what's happening with dollar yen? 
the dollar yen is very susceptible to this market volatility. And we, we saw that last week, you know, if you compare this to the equity market. So when equity market rallied, look at the massive rally that we had in some of this uh, yen pairs. But then as the market fell, and again, that fell again as well. So right now you're dealing with volatility if you're dealing with the yen pairs. So I would use an extra caution if, you, if you're using the yen trades because this can really fluctuate. Now, if we go on all the other yen crosses, I mean, we are sitting at some key levels. Look at CAD yen. It's sitting at the bottom here. We had a massive reversal here in Swiss franc yen. So this is another one. So the, the entire question here is that can we expect some continuity from what we saw last week? And I think this is where you want to be in the middle um, and you want to be just looking at and see if there's a continuation, then we'll go for that. If it's not, we might pair some of the some of the losses or some of the gains that we saw last week. But uh, the trend scare, again, trend scores are not the best, which is why I'm not very uh, bullish or bearish on some of these currencies. But in between, there's, there's good opportunities. I mean, look at dollar CAD is just sitting right at the resistance here. Right now, again, not a... You're not seeing that correlation, um, positive negative correlation between this uh, dollar CAD to really jump on this. So this is more like flat currency uh, pair. But if you take a look at Kiwi CAD, let's see. I mean, we've seen a nice little recovery in Kiwi CAD here. So are we in for CAD more weakness? But that's something we have to really pay attention to uh, next week. Now let's take a look at Euro crosses as well, because we can also take a look at Euro Kiwi. As you can see that we 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 touch we touch that double resistance right here, and we can be moving lower as of you know as we break this level here. So the the key is when do we enter? If you are convinced with a certain direction, then look for bear rallies to be shorted into. You can see that there was the big move down here with a big massive bear rally, and that's back down here as well. So you want to use those. Um, bear rallies to short into as far as you know that we have the direction in place now uh, can we get that sort of correlation in other places i mean i actually like some of these correlations right now like euro pound you can see is moving lower the moving averages are crossing so we're definitely getting a, a, a decent price action in some of these currencies that you know generally don't move as much but they are moving in the shorter term um, but outside of the euro, I, like I said, pay attention to Swiss franc crosses as well, uh, especially if we take a look at some of this, um, some of this Kiwi Swiss franc. Um, even even if the if the uh, other currencies start to pick up against it, I mean, we can see uh, pound Swiss franc. They all had a decent move last week. They all reversed from an extreme, um, you know, some sort of bearish uh, price action to a bullish price action. So these are the pairs that I'll be paying attention to. You can you can you can kind of study and see okay what other pairs are doing. Um, you can see that there's some um, the euro dollar is still in a sideways trade. So if you got we got the big move down and it just really hasn't gone anywhere. So the dollar crosses will be the big one next week. I think if if the dollar comes out stronger, we can actually see some reversals take place as well. And maybe in that case, I would like the Aussie dollar on the short side. But you can see in the shorter term, it's reclaiming that. Uh, support that it broke here but overall it still looks pretty weak it's not a bullish currency pair it's still a weaker currency pair and like i said pay attention to the bond markets look at the bond yields so us to zero two y you can put that in your trading view that give you the uh the bond yield for two years you can see that how how volatile last week was in the in the in the bond market and the yields have been uh, going back and forth, especially look at these days here. We had a nice little jump here, a nice little jump here, and then we are actually coming off below this 200 moving average, which again, we haven't broken that 200 moving average since 2022. So this is this a beginning of something? Is this an inflection point? Uh, I think it's still early to call that. We need the Fed to kind of show that in their statement if the, if this is the, the change here. But I do want to show that how if you look at the move index, which is the, the volatility in the bond market, index you can see that we are at the highest level since uh since since the uh, covid um 2020 uh, took place right here so you can see that we are we're actually higher and the volatility is even higher going back to this financial crisis here as well so is the ball market telling us something and we think that's the big question one week move is that enough to justify i think we need to see some more of that consistent move here to tell us maybe that's a 
maybe that's a, a turning point here. And if that's a turning point, then I think the dollar likely to weaken here further. And if this, again, you can see that we had a nice little recovery here and the dollar is starting to look a little bit weaker. In that case, we can also take a look at currencies like Kiwi dollar, which has been, you know, we buy at the resistance here, we can start to climb a higher a little bit from here as well. But again, right now, like I said, I'm more in the middle here. If you look at the expectation, 62% is at 425 basis uh, rate hike. But if the statement is not as dovish as people are expecting, we could see a reversal. In so that's the game plan. Again, next week, very excited. We have a lot to uh, chew through. Uh, the equity markets, again, remains bearish, but expect to uh, sell bear rallies. And if and this is a sideways trend, so I'm not really as as uh, bullish or bearish on uh, on the uh, expectation here. So uh, what we need to focus on is volatility and currency in play. And as always, make sure you follow the relative strength of weakness. Very important. Don't get married to an outlook. Things can change in a very split second. And you have to make sure you're, you're, you're uh, flexible enough to make adjustments and not stick uh, with your outlook, which might not be the, which might not be the right outlook uh, going into next week. Well, thanks everyone for joining. Have a great uh, rest of the weekend. We'll see you guys next week. It'll be a busy week, so we'll, we'll be meeting throughout the week. If you have any questions, reach out. Till then, take care.